Good evening. Let's all stand together. Turn to page 463 in our hymn. Page 463. We'll sing all three stanzas of Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance. Page 463. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fool! taste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. On the second, perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. You may, you may be seated. Welcome to evening services, midweek services. Brother Shannon, if you'll come and uh, take prayer requests at this time, it's good to see all of you here. Thank God for the time we have together. Amen. Good evening. At this time, let's take our prayer requests to the Lord. So if you have any requests, please make them known. Uh, continue to pray for uh, our leaders, of course. Continue to pray for those at the local level, national level. Uh, pray for our students. Pray for our pastor. Pray for our other uh, ministers, Pastor Lucas, Pastor Burris. Pray for family. Continue to pray for co-workers lost and uh, in need. Pray for sick family members as well. Of course, pray for each other. Any others that I'm missing at this time? Yes, sir, Brother Donald. Yeah. We're glad to have, that's right, glad to have Isaiah back. He went through a little bit of uh, issue himself. Isaiah, did I see your hand? 
Yes. We've been mentioned this before, but this is a, it's a men's fellowship, uh, which is Saturday, November 12th. That will be from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, so we do want to keep that in prayer as well. All who are able to be there, we'd love to see you there. Um, again, that's November 12th, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Saturday. And that will be uh, at Family Fellowship Baptist Church here in Mobile. Any other requests? Right. So there is a lot of things that I can't even bring to mind right now about five or six different things. Co workers just okay. uh, pray mostly for salvation, but things that they're dealing with as well. All right. Let's go to Lord and word of prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. Lord, we thank you for uh, the beauty of it. We thank you for uh, being able to experience a wonderful day physically. But Lord, we ask you would help us as we gather our thoughts, gather ourselves together tonight for uh, this midweek service. You would cause us, Lord, to center our focus on, upon you. Uh, Lord, as we open your word, help our hearts to be open and receptive. And uh, Lord, help us to apply your word um, to our life and uh, our circumstances. Lord, we ask that you would help us to be diligent as we pray one for another. Lord, knowing we each have uh, various burdens, uh, different things that uh, our lives are um, affected by uh, personally, but Lord, we ask you would help us to be, um, help us to exercise camaraderie and, and uh, share one another's burdens as your word commands us to do. Lord, we ask that you would help us as we consider co-workers, Lord, that we work in and amongst them. And uh, Lord, we can see how um, the, the results of uh, what's going on in their life has uh, affected them, Lord. Uh, many things that we um, feel downcast sometimes because we, we see the effect. We see how uh, it impacts them, Lord. And uh, Lord, we ask that you would help us as we see them being troubled. Uh, give us a, a sensitive heart to their needs. Uh, Lord, help us to uh, to definitely pray for them, but Lord, help us to offer words of encouragement, and uh, Lord, in times where we have to remain silent, Lord, we ask that you would help us to to uh, pray and to uh, to take them to your, your feet. Lord, we ask that you would help uh, those who have uh, ill family members. Thank you that you brought some of them back to us, Lord, in uh, recovery, but Lord, there's so many different um, illnesses that are going around right now, this uh, this time of season, Lord, we ask you to bless Brother Donald's family and uh, his his uh, health as well. Thank you for bringing back Isaiah uh, to, uh, to to health. Lord, thank you so much for uh, how you've given us um, those who are unaffected by sicknesses thus far. Lord, you kept us safe and kept us healthy at this point. But Lord, we ask you would help us to exercise good judgment and uh, that which we do. Uh, Lord, to be uh, safe and to keep ourselves health healthy throughout this time. We ask you would help uh, the Watts family, uh, Lord, as they have experienced uh, great loss of a loved one, but uh, we ask you would bless Kariah and, and mine, Lord, as they uh, continue on. Give them the encouragement from family, give them the strength that they need in these upcoming days that will be difficult, but Lord, uh, we ask that you would show them your faithfulness and your strength. Lord, we ask you would help uh, those who are uh, in great need uh, concerning uh, maybe resources or uh, some of who are just struggling, uh, not, I don't want to say to get by, but Lord, they're struggling uh, for various reasons. And we ask you would meet their needs. And as we make them known, as they make them known, you would, you would help us to pray for them uh, faithfully, consistently. Lord, we ask you would help um, the Yeldon family or many different health needs there. We ask you to bless uh, Mrs. Yeldon. Uh, raise her up, Lord. Give her the strength that she needs in her body. Give her the recovery that she needs undergoing several procedures recently. And 
Lord, we ask you would just um, give her encouragement um, through your, the reading of your word and also, Lord, to her family members. Uh, we pray that they would gather uh, around her and uh, bring her to full strength. Lord, we ask you would help. Um, we think of Pastor Lucas, Pastor Burris, uh, others in ministry that have uh, not only gone, to, gone on to help us, Lord, and to uh, be a, uh, an encouragement to this ministry, but Lord, those who um, are supporting them as well. We think of the burdens uh, for their ministry. Uh, we ask you would help uh, Brother Adrian to be encouraged uh, by those who are supporting him. Lord, and uh, we, we, we know that there's so many different things that are at play. Uh, we know that Satan is uh, trying to attack and uh, Satan desires to sift us. And uh, Lord, we ask you would help us to be, uh, to be steadfast and immovable, Lord, in your work. Lord, we ask you would help us as we open your word uh, to be diligent in focusing in on that which you've called us to do. Use us for your honor and your glory. As we uh, look forward to the message tonight, bless Pastor, give him the words he needs to, uh, to speak to our hearts. We ask that you would uh, encourage his heart even as he speaks. Lord, use him uh, for the purpose you have called him to tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Right, we um, have a letter that I'm going to read uh, briefly that, um, from our missionary and evangelist, <clears throat> Adrian Burden. Um, and this was printed, you printed this for me today, I believe. Uh, they put this on their website, and I think he does that every couple of months. And uh, it says, Dear faithful friends, we are, faith we are thankful to be in the service of the King. The summer ministry schedule tends to be my favorite, even though it is most demanding physically and spiritually. In a 47-day time period, I preached 67 times in eight different states, spanning from New York to South Texas to Michigan. You can see from that statistic alone that there is no other time of year quite like the summer. Consequently, the spiritual fruit in the summer is unlike any other time as well. Other than a few Sunday-only meetings, uh, this summer has been spent preaching exclusively to juniors and teenagers in which the Lord blessed with many tender hearts being in attendance. The preaching ministry has definitely been my focus. For this summer, I've been counseling more often than I can remember. I've spoken with hundreds of teens from across the country, and honestly, my heart has been simultaneously broken and challenged. My heart is broken for the spiritual condition of many young people due in part to Christian parents maintaining a haphazard, and I agree with this, mediocre walk with God that is breeding more confusion than they probably realize. My heart is challenged as I am more confident than ever, but even though there are many outward difficulties facing our youth, the true battle lies in the spiritual, but there is hope to be found in God's precious word. It is true that this summer I have learned new vocabulary about the transgender community and have not and got quite the education about mental illness. However, I've had the privilege to see some hearts broken by confusion and identitylessness. 
find their ultimate satisfaction and fulfillment in God, their creator. So what a joy and thrill to see people getting a true understanding. And it takes men of God doing that and getting out there and telling them and teaching them. What a blessing to see those of all ages who have come to know their creator as their savior this summer. Words cannot express the joy that is found and having the opportunity to give the gospel is my full-time job. What an honor. We say a thank you for those who support and give to make this a possibility. As we look ahead, we look forward to a fall filled with opportunities to speak at revivals, missions, conferences, school camps, and spiritual renewal conference. I enjoy the variety of opportunities the Lord grants us as we travel for him. As it pertains to international ministry, we are thankful thankfully moving in the right direction toward getting ourselves in this position to return to Honduras. If you know um, our brother Adrian, he has a heart for um, Honduras. Each month we are still doing the math to see when that will take place. We did not, however, have to make the decision. Uh, we did, however, have to make the decision to not leave January, but push it back tentatively to November or December. Therefore, we're scheduling no, uh, normal meetings for this coming winter. We're currently in contact with the folks there in Honduras, trying to determine how we can use our time most effectively upon our return. Pray as we go forward in this fall season that we will bring glory to the Lord's name. Thank you once again for your consistent prayers and support for the ministry of the international evangelism. I have a second letter here, but these will be posted on the bulletin in the back of the chat. And uh, we'll take care of making sure that is really available so it can be read. And we are in the book of John tonight, chapter 14. John chapter 14 and verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. I am thankful for that uh, promise and the uh, surety of that promise. I'm grateful for what we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for who you are and what you mean to us and that we're washed by the blood of the Lamb not by our works of righteousness, but only by the working of Jesus Christ. When he went to Calvary, suffered, bled, and died in our place and for our sins. And Father, now we have prepared for us those that have received him by faith. We have prepared for us a mansion in heaven that he's gone to prepare for us. And we have the promise that he's coming again. Father, help us tonight as we look into more of these promises. Uh, some that have been fulfilled, and uh, we looked over that briefly, but as we look to what is to come, guide us in your truth. Your word is true. Father, let us be sensitive to each and every word of God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. When our faith becomes sight, now we started this uh, last Thursday uh, night, and I'll tell you, I we left on that promise of uh, of of um, the judgment for the the uh, the judgment seat of Christ. We looked at the rapture. This is the children of God going to be with uh, with their Lord and their Savior, and what a joyous time that is! And we look at the fact that all of our works will be tried uh, before God, and um, the reason why we're doing the work, the motive behind it. Uh, God knows the motive of the pastor. God knows the motive of every member of Grace Bible Baptist Church. God is well in control of what's happening here. And God will put it all to the test one day. He's going to put it on the fire and it will be tried. He said, I counsel you to buy me gold, silver, precious stones, and, that, and uh, not the wood, hay, and stubble. A lot of people are doing a good thing, but for the wrong reason wood, hay, and stubble, doing a good thing, but the wrong motive. We looked at how some people preach Christ of, of, of contention. Some people preach Christ of envy. Paul said, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. I am glad for that. But boy, I tell you, I want the reward too. I, I don't want to be it to be in vain what I've done. I, I want that crown. 
I want what what is in store for me, and I don't want it to be uh, cast by the wayside because, son, everything you did was wood, hand, stuff. Everything, you did it for the wrong reason. You did it trying to prove this to this one or prove this to that one or, or be better than this church over there or better than that one over there instead of just simply serving me and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. My job isn't to, uh, to be all in what somebody else is doing. I have to oversee here, but it's not to be in what somebody else is doing. But at the same time, what, what means that to thee, what he's doing? Follow thou me. Well, we get so caught up on what somebody else is doing or what they're not doing. And what you fail to realize while you're pointing the finger at them, there's three more pointing back at us the whole time. And you, and you, and you, and wait a minute, God, search my heart. <laughs> my heart, God. It, when, when my stuff is put to the fire, try me, my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, because I want to strive to please you. I don't want, when I'm standing before God, at that, uh, that the judgment seat of Christ, for my works to burn up. Because all I can think is, what a waste. What a waste. Uh, I've got a job to do, and I want to be effective at it. On, on, um, in our careers, we have to be effective in our job. I want my boss to know that I'm doing my job. Uh, we, want to, we want to get that promotion. We want that bonus. We, we strive to get these things. Well, boss got to see something in you. He's not going to just, well, hey, this one, uh, you, you are our employee of the month for what? Um, for sleeping, for not showing up, employee of the month. No, that's not what I want. I don't want my name on the billboard as we as we sign in at the job and and they say Richard was always late. Oh. <laughs> I got to come in in here now and work, but everybody's looking at me because I was always late, you know, or uh, not doing his job, ineffective. Doing it for the wrong reason. Doing it with a bad attitude. Doing it in bitterness and anger. Well, I want what I do to please God. We know that one day we'll be raptured out of here. We know the reliability of his word. We're looking at the revealing of the program of the end times. Uh, we're in the last days. There's coming a day when time will be no more. All that has been <laughs> is coming to an end. What, what, what man is used to as they, as they were used to in the days of Noah, as they were used to drinking and, and laughing and mocking the man of God as he's trying to, uh, to do the work of God, they're steady mocking and laughing and railing and not listening and not obeying and not getting in, in line with what God has said. Well, one day the door shut. Noah didn't shut the door. God did. And when God shut the door, Noah from the inside couldn't open it, and they from the outside could not open it. It's a God thing. And when God shuts the door, it's closed. God, God opens doors that we can't open, and God closes doors that we cannot close. But I'm talking about this door at the end of time when he calls his children home. Things change. Things change. I'm grateful that as we get into this next portion, that I'm not here for this. You know, we, we, our works are going to be tried. Some, all their works are going to burn up and they'll be saved. The Bible says, yet so as by fire. I mean, Pitiful. I don't want any of us there. As by fire. But I would rather you be there than not be there at all. I would much rather you be there as by fire than not be there at all. Because there are many who are wishing they were at least there as, as by fire. Just barely. Just, just did enough. Just trusted God and never did anything else. Well, I wish everybody would get saved. But there are some Christians who could have done a great deal for God. And for fear of what someone else would say. 
for fear of uh, I stutter. Moses wouldn't have led the people because I, I have a speech impediment. Well, I have a job for you to do. And either you're going to do the job that I've given you or you're going to uh, cower and, and run away in fear or you're going to be bold as a lion and do what I've called you and ordained you and sent you to do. I don't take the calling lightly. I don't take the ordaining lightly. I don't take the sending lightly. I want to be faithful to what God has given me to do. Now we know that there are going to be years of tribulation on this earth. You say, man, it's trying times right now. No, I'm not talking about a recession. I'm not talking about zero in the bank account. I'm not talking about wondering if we got eggs for tomorrow. I'm not talking about do we have bacon for, for grits and bacon and eggs in the morning. I'm not talking about do I have a job still. I'm not talking about is my boss going to lay me off this week or next week. I'm talking about some serious tribulation. I mentioned last week that when God calls his children home, hey, the Holy Spirit of God indwelled his children. And when he calls us home, there's no need for the Spirit of God to still be here. This is going to be a Christless earth. A place that is totally absent of the presence and the power of God. This is not a place where you want to be. You don't want to be dealing with these years of tribulation. While we're enjoying the presence of God, the presence of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we get to see the scars. We get to sing and cast crowns at his feet. We get to rejoice. We get to see some things burn up and we know what was wrong in our life. We know what we could have done better, but we also see some things that don't burn up. But beyond all of that, we're with Jesus in heaven. But there is no Christ here on earth. We can look at a community and say, that's a Christless people. Have you ever heard that? It could be said of Sodom and Gomorrah that they hated God, that they were Christless. They rejected him. That will be the entire world. No Christ. I mentioned that those Christians that are raptured out of fear, that are with loved ones, and all of a sudden there's complete panic mode because where's my baby? Where's my loved one? They were right here. Where are they at? And there's sheer panic on the earth. Because people are missing. I'm not talking about one missing and uh, it's been 24 hours. Let's know a, a, a lot of people are missing. There, there are a lot of people. We, they're not answering the phone. We, we can't get them to answer an email. We can't, we can't get them on FaceTime. We can't get them on anything. We're, we're calling and calling. I've called their, their husband. I've called their wife. I, I've called their parents. We can't find them. People began to panic. I'll, I'll, <laughs> it doesn't take much for me to panic with my children. I say panic, but about hit that red button that never gets undone. Because once it's pushed, I don't know how to undo it. But I don't see them, and we got a problem in this store. And it can be as big as Walmart or Sam's or wherever. Everybody's about to know there's a problem in here. Why? Because I don't see my child. Now I'm saved. Imagine the lost. I think each and every one of us are at that place where if I'm missing my child, you ever had your child, you're shopping for clothes and all of a sudden you hit panic mode and all of a sudden the child comes out of, out of the hangers over there into the clothes and they were playing and you're like, you don't know how close we just came. Get yourself over here right now. Because I was about to make a scene and I'm still making a scene right now because you weren't where you're supposed to be. Well, there's going to be some scenes made. That pilot that loves the Lord is looking for that day. That glorious appearing of the great God and Savior. In the twinkling of an eye. Uh, we're pilotless. Uh, we, we, were, we had 16 hours on this plane and we have no pilot. 
what do we do? As a plane plunges to the earth. Vehicles on the interstate. I, I, I can just envision all of this because we're no longer here. Chaos ensues. If you read some of Revelation, let's turn there. Revelations, we'll read a little bit of it. I'm giving you just what I can, can picture in my mind as, as, as chaos ensues amongst people. And we see how people act uh, while Christ is, his spirit is present. Imagine how much worse it's going to be when there's an absence of Christ. Revelation chapter 6, we'll read there first, verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. This is the sixth seal being opened here. When she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. The whole earth is shaking because of this. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in dens and in, in the dens and in the rocks and the mountains. Now, they're not doing that right now. They're bragging and boasting and drinking and smoking and doping it up and acting a fool. But in this day, they'll say to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. See, that's the main thing right there. See, the children of God have been called home with him, but now there's only an angry God ready to deal with sin and with the unrepentant sinner. The unrepentant sinner. This is why it's so important you know Christ is your Savior. Because these are some promises. These are some things that he promised he, would, he was coming to redeem us. He, he did. He died on the cross for us. That's a promise. He said, I, 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 my comfort is coming. I, I promise you the comforter will come, but I got to go first. Well, he left and the comforter came. But here's coming a day that no man can escape. For the great day of his wrath is come. There's a day of his wrath. Yes, sir. You're reading it in scripture. And who shall be able to stand? There's no escaping it. You find in chapter 8 that seven angels have seven trumpets prepared to sound. A, a third portion of the sea and, uh, will become blood. And, uh, the creatures in, that are living in the sea begin to die and the ships are uh, destroyed. And Jump down to chapter 8 and verse uh, 10. We we'll start there. The third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven. Now a third of the of the of the uh, stars are blotted out. A third of the sun's blotted out. A third of the moon's already blotted out. But here we see now. There fell a star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the river, rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now you're talking about a time where they are uh, being funny with how uh, food and water is being given. So people are going to run to the rivers. They're going to run down there and try to get something to drink. They're going to run and, and try to do what they can. But here you see that they're dying as they drink this. The fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten. Third part of the moon, third part of the stars. So the third part of them was dark, and then the day shone not for the third part of it. Man, it's already dark. It's already dark, but it's getting darker. The deeper we get into this, the darker it gets. Don't die without Christ. Make sure you know Christ as your Lord and Savior. I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven with saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. We hadn't even got to the first woe yet. <laughs> this is not something you want to be around for. In chapter nine, you find that the bottomless pit is open and there arose a smoke out of the pit. 
the sun and the air are darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. What, where's the bottomless pit, Hale? The bottomless pit is opened up to the earth and the smoke of hell billows into it. This is a time that no one wants to experience. But I promise you, it's coming. You don't see it today. Oh, that air feels good right now. Woo. I mean, it's not as hot outside as it has been. But uh, you keep reading, you find that uh, locusts and scorpions are going to come out of this bottomless pit. Well, this thing gets bad. We can't find loved ones. People are dying and all kind of stuff happening. And then you're going to find they get to a place. Revelation chapter 9 and verse 6. This is a terrible thought. But you got to see it. In those days shall men seek death. And shall not find it. And shall desire to die. And death shall flee from them. God is bringing tribulation on the earth there are some that believe we're here for that I thank God I'm not here for that I, I don't know nothing about that uh -uh. I, I don't know anything about that don't want to know anything I, I, I read it right there and that's enough <laughs> that's enough I am thankful that I'm right there with Jesus worshiping him and singing songs with our savior in heaven what a day that will be I don't have to go. Nobody has to go through the tribulation, but many will because of their rejection of Jesus Christ. We find that after that, it's the glorious appearing of our Savior. He's coming back again to deal with sin. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 says this. Immediately after the tribulation in those days shall the sun be darkened. The moon shall not give her light. The star shall fall from heaven. And the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, Satan is going to try to do his thing too. He's going to see all this and he's going to try to defeat our Lord and Savior. But I find that he's cast into the bottomless pit. Revelation chapter 20. <clears throat> you can turn there because we've got a few verses to read there. Revelation chapter 20. And verse 1 it says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So Satan loses. There are people that are going to be siding with him. They're going to gather together with him and try to fight against God. They're going to lose. Christ will reign for a thousand years on this earth. Years of tribulation without him, and then things will be as they should have been from the creation. What a mighty God. And he's given us these promises. As we have seen the promises of old and we have seen them fulfilled, we know the reliability and the validity of the scriptures. Let this sink in. As a child of God, I thank God I'm saved. I thank God. Heaven is my home. Jesus is my savior. I have a mansion being prepared for me. I want to do everything I can that when I stand before that judgment seat of Christ, 
to make sure there is gold, silver, and precious stones. That's our time to do that right now. The lost need to see this right here and see the promises of God and say, hey, I, I, I don't want this for me. <laughs> I, I don't want this. I, I don't want to go through that. I don't want to have to experience the tribulation. I don't want to have to live without Christ in this earth. What a terrible, terrible time. Verse 7 of chapter 20, you find that we get to the final judgment of Satan. When the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and come past the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. I just, I picture Satan trying to beat God still. He knows he has but a short time, but he's going to try his best to beat God. You think he's not trying his best to destroy us? <laughs> you think Satan's not trying his best to defeat us? Hey, you better wake up. You, you better wake up and realize what's happening here. He knows that he has but a short time and he's looking for as many victories as he can get today. Am I victorious over that church? Am I victorious over that person? Can I go and accuse them before God today? Every day standing in accusation of us. There's coming a day. He's going to stand toe to toe one more time for the last time. And he will be defeated. Bible says in verse 10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Woo, no more devil. It's not over. See, he deceived many. Many followed after the devil. Many followed the worldliness, ungodliness. Many followed after vile wickedness. Many desired satanic things and never sought after God. Well, your leader, your father, the devil, was just cast into hell. And now we have what no child of God will ever experience. The great white throne judgment. You know, I, I love the judgment seat of Christ. <laughs> you know, I, I see mercy there. I see the grace of God there. I, I see the love of God at the judgment seat of Christ. I see the compassion of God, the goodness of God that I could even buy of him gold, silver, and precious stones. That I could even have that type of an investment to present to my Savior. We find in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, a great white throne. And I saw a great white throne in him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. There's nowhere to hide. People hiding with this stuff now, hiding over here. Got the, what, they're, what they're conceiving and concocting in their mind and hiding with that thought. And there's no place for you to hide now. Verse 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Here it is, according to their works. All those people that said, I'm doing good all by myself. I got it all worked out with the man upstairs. I, 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 my good outweighs my bad. Okay, we're going to judge your works. And every one of those works will not come close to the work of Jesus Christ. And they will stand there boasting of themselves and what they have done. 
We, we cast out devils in thy name and in thy name done many wonderful works. And he'll say unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Well, well, we were in church. We sang. We did a special that last Sunday. You remember? We prayed. We had a prayer meeting and, and we did this and, and we did that. I remember we went and knocked doors and tried to get people out to church. I remember doing a lot of, I never knew you because you never repented of sin. You never turned away from wickedness and sin and ungodliness. You long for that stuff, but you like to look like you were doing something. God says, I never knew you. Depart from me. He says, I saw the dead small and great stand before God. And the books were opened and another book was opened, which, was, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. God, now, no, you don't want to be judged by your works. <laughs> you don't want to be at this great white throne judgment. Verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Let me tell you something. This is no joke. I've said it for years. Hell is just as hot as God is real. And the real God will cast your real soul into the real hell. If you don't really repent of sin and really receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Well, that sounds harsh. That's the truth. That doctor tells you you need to clean up your, your, your uh, diet. You know, you get rid of some of those red meats. Okay, doctor, I'll do that. That sounds harsh. We, we, okay, doctor, I'll do that. Hey, the doctor's telling you, repent of sin. Turn to Christ. Find life in Christ. Well, I just, I can't, preachers, you can't trust them. They just... Always, always prophesying evil against us. I'm just telling you what God's word said. And I'm here to tell you, if you go against God, you go contrary to God, and you win, then God was a lie, and God didn't call me. That's how serious God is about this. God's hand isn't on me if this isn't the truth. But I tell you what, you better wake up. You better hear it. The great white throne judgment. You know, it's not that um, hell is a terrible place. But what's worse about it is this. There is no Christ. See, those who are saved are with him forever. So shall we ever be with the Lord. <sighs> but in hell, there's no mercy. Luke 16, you can find a, a, a rich man had all that the world could offer. He's begging for the tip of a wet finger. If I could just get the tip. You know, we get hot, we play football, we're running. We, we have our, our station, we go and we get Gatorade or water, right, guys? We, that's, man, it's hot out here. Nope, 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 nope. There isn't any of that in hell. There is not an ounce of mercy in hell. Well, how could God be so merciless? Because he was so merciful. How could God pour out so much wrath? Because he poured out so much love. Because he is God. And because what he says is what's going to come to pass. He said it. You better believe it's going to happen. Uh, we don't believe it. Well, I guess God should just write that, erase that out of the Bible. Well, I mean, this one doesn't believe this. That one doesn't believe that. Look, hold on now. Hold on. I'm, I'm, the eraser's gone. I need another new eraser. Anybody got one? Because there wouldn't be much of a Bible left. Literally, this, 
we probably have about uh let's see here about that much bible left if we went off what everybody believed to be the truth but i'll tell you what is true let god be true and every man a liar see this right here is god's ordained word settled in heaven and men will be judged by it one day and when he opens the book and he begins to go through that book and you'll remember the day you heard but it's too late so if there's anybody here tonight that's not saved let me plead with you. Turn to Christ. Repent of sin. You don't want this to be your end. Well, I'm young and I got my whole life ahead of me. Something else I've done before. You got a few young people in here. Any of you lost classmates? Somebody you knew at school. Not here anymore. They were young too. Find in scripture, man thought he had his whole life ahead of him. I'm going to tear down my small bars and build greater. And God said, thou fool. This night, thy soul shall be required of thee. Preacher, you're making me nervous. Good. Because I want you to turn to Christ. I'd rather you be nervous today than suffering for all eternity. Repent of sin. Turn to Christ. And finally, the beginning of eternity for us, God's children. New heaven and a new earth. Revelations 21 and verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Here we are at the end of it. Look at verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Neither sorrow. Nor crying. There shall be any more pain. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. You know, I believe that in heaven, we're going to kind of be looking around for some people we knew. And based on their faith, we may not find them. And I believe that We'll have a tear for them. I can't find them anywhere. Hey, I could hear us saying, look in the book. Look in the book. Hey, hey, is my brother's name there? I got four brothers. Tell me my brother's name is in there. Mom, dad, uncle. I see Jesus saying, come here, son. Come here. Come here. He wipes the tears. And as he does, so he says, things are changing right now, too. You won't ever cry again. The sorrow is gone. You see, there's no sorrow in heaven. Because we're with the Savior. We're to enjoy all of heaven. Not to be sitting there grieving because somebody else didn't receive Christ. As hard as that can sound, he said it. Neither shall there be any more pain, no more death. God's going to wipe the tears, no sorrow, no crying. Why? The former things are passed away. I don't think we're going to remember all of that. We may. I, I, I think he's just going to clear our minds of it and let us enjoy heaven. 
before we get there, before I get there, <laughs> I don't know who else is going. Before us saved get there, I want to encourage whoever may not be saved to get on board. Get on board. Because at any moment, the trumpet may sound. At any moment, in the twinkling of an eye, things can change. We'll be with Jesus. You'll be entering into the tribulation. I just don't, it's a promise. <laughs> he promised he was going to come and redeem his people. He promised and he did it. He promised that he would give the comforter to those that receive him. He's promised and he's done. it. And he wants to do it for you tonight. But something must be done. You must turn to Christ. I want to see you in heaven. I want to see you in heaven. More than me wanting to see you in heaven. You want to see Jesus. I assure you. I didn't read all that the tribulation entails. There's a host more. I just highlighted a few things. But I promise you. These are promises. That no one wants to endure. So if you're not saved. Receive Christ. This night. Tonight. Tomorrow's not promised. I may wake up in the morning face to face with Jesus. If you were to die tonight, where do you lift up your eyes? Are you looking at Jesus? Or are you in danger of hell? That's the question. Have you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? Or do you need to receive him? My Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. That power is not given to anybody else but those that believe on him. Even to them that believe on his name. They can go do a bunch of works, Brother Shannon. They go do a bunch of good works. But God didn't give the power for that. They can go get baptized, but God ain't given the power for that. They can sit in church all their life, but God ain't given power for that. There's one thing he's given power for. Those that receive my son. He that hath the son hath life. He that hath not the son of God hath not life. And he opens up the book. And he goes to the book. Where will he find you in there? My prayer is that he says you're covered by the blood. Covered by the blood of the Lamb. There is a difference in the judgment of the saved and the judgment of the lost. I thank God for his mercy. What about you tonight? I thank God for his mercy. Boy, we could, he didn't have to do any of this for us. But to know that not only am I saved, not only is there a mansion being prepared for me in heaven, there's also a fire waiting, waiting to try my work. I want to put it all out there for Christ. Everything I can do for him. Not for somebody down the road. Not for the next door neighbor. Not for anybody in here. Not for me per se. For him. For him. Child of God, you're saved. Yeah, I'm saved. Woo! I don't have, man, I'm glad I'm saved. I don't have to be at that. I don't, I don't have any part of that, that great white throne judgment. Hey, there is a judgment coming. Now. <laughs> What's your work looking like? Well, I mean, I, I won't fall under condemnation because I'm saved. And what is your work? What have you done for Christ? What is your impact for Christ? Where is your faithfulness for Christ? Where is your laboring for Christ? 
well, I mean, I did this and I did that over there, but what do you mean? Like, there is a lot. Let's let's get in the word of God together. Let's learn how to labor together. Let's learn how to work together for God. Let's learn how to how to how to see that silver and gold and precious stone. Because it's there. And I promise you, when 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 my Savior puts the, the fire to the work, that's what I want represented of this church. Every member in here, their work to remain. I don't want you crying because it's burning up. I want you to remain, that work to remain. And you can say, see, Lord, I was, I was genuine. I was genuinely trying to serve you. I was genuinely living for you. I was genuinely following you. I did not go over here. I served you with the right heart, the right spirit, the right motive. For the right reason, I did this work. That's important. There are a lot of people doing a great thing. They're saved for the wrong reason. The wrong reason. Search me, O oh God. Search me. We're an open book to him. Already an open book. Did you know you could, you could judge a matter today and not have to be judged? You, you realize that? There, there are some things that you can you can get it right right now and y'all say yeah you, you took care of that job. look at that that's what i'm talking about that that is important that's necessary i don't want any of us to be standing there saying man i i hit my talent now i have nothing to show for it. i want you to be able to cast crowns at his feet I, I, I want us all in, all in. That that is your personal choice. Your personal choice. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this time together around your word. Father, I pray that you've stirred our hearts tonight. Challenge us. Father, may you draw us as your children closer to you. And Father, I pray for any that may be amongst us that's not saved. They don't know you as their Lord and Savior. God, you've been so merciful. You've been so good. You let them hear one more time that they can be saved this very night. Father, don't let this night pass them by before they repent of sin, turn to Christ, and become born again. Would you add your blessing to the reading and the preaching of your word? In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.